Complete training is available at itdvds.com. Now that we've installed the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor, we can go ahead and use it to check our system out to make sure we can upgrade to Windows 7. Let's us know here that Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor checks your PC to see if it's ready to run Windows 7. When it's finished, you'll see which upgrade options are available and get guidance on fixing system program and device issues we found before you install Windows 7. Now one thing that's really important is that you connect and turn on all your devices. So if you've got any external hard drives or webcams or whatever you've got connected to your computer, you want to make sure they're connected and powered on because you want this Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor to check those and make sure they're going to work when you upgrade to Windows 7. So if we don't have this launched already, let me show you how to launch it. I'm just going to go to the Start menu, Programs, and I'll select Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. Notice there's also a shortcut here on your desktop. So I'll just double click on that. And I've got all my devices connected and turned on, and I'll click Start Check. And it's going to take a few minutes to go out and check your system. Okay, and it's finished. Notice at the top here we have two different reports, a 32-bit report and a 64-bit report. So if we're going to upgrade to Windows 7 32-bit, then we'd want to look at this report. If we want to upgrade to Windows 7 64-bit, then we want to click on the 64-bit report. And most likely we'll want to look at both to see if our computer has the ability to upgrade to 64-bit if we're currently running a 32-bit version of Windows. And we're going to talk more about 32-bit versus 64-bit in the next movie. So I'm going to go ahead and select the 32-bit report. And let's go down here and take a look at what the report details are. As far as installation goes, we're going to need to do a custom installation in order to upgrade what I've got as Windows XP to Windows 7. So there isn't any actual upgrade path. We've got to put a fresh install of Windows 7 on there and then move our files over. And we're actually going to look at how to do this later on. We can see that Windows Arrow support. I get a little warning here in Windows Arrow is the user interface that came with uh, Windows Vista. It's also with Windows 7. Let's us know our current graphics adapter won't support the Windows Arrow user interface. If you want to experience the benefits of Windows Arrow, contact your PC manufacturer or retail to upgrade. See if an upgrade is available. Basically, you'll need a new graphics card. Uh, down here, Outlook Express, it lets me know that this program is no longer included with Windows 7. So if I've got a bunch of stuff in Outlook Express, this is a nice warning because I need to back all that up and then try to import it into what Windows 7 has is Windows Mail. And as far as the system requirements go, I can see that I passed them all. These are going to be real important if we're able to even upgrade to Windows 7. If I want to see all the system requirements, I just go ahead and click on this link and I can just scroll down and we see that my CPU speed is good it has to be at least one gigahertz I've got two gigs of RAM that's good I need at least one gig of RAM to run Windows 7 and I've also got 28.1 gigs of free space it lets me know that in order to run the 32-bit version of Windows 7 I need at least 16 gigs of free space and if we want to go back to the overview I'll just click back to the overview and I'll scroll down a little further and here we get to our devices now this is going to be really important because a lot of devices may not have the drivers necessary for Windows 7 installed on the system you have but they may be available uh, you may have to go to the manufacturers website and download the drivers or Windows 7 may already have them included and if that's the case it'll let you know here you can see here I've got an accelerated AMD PC net adapter and this is not compatible with Windows 7 so I'm gonna have a problem there uh, I may need to either replace this particular piece of hardware or find a different driver for it and we've got a couple of question marks here you can see my SVGA 2 adapter uh, this is unknown so the Windows 7 upgrade advisor isn't sure so we will wanna check this out anything unknown we will wanna go ahead and research to see if it's compatible with Windows 7 and most likely you're gonna visit the manufacturers website to do that and if we want to see all the devices that are compatible we just click on the see all devices link and it lets me know I've got an Intel IDE controller here that'll work with Windows 7 no problem so I'll click back to overview scroll down again and now we go to the program section 
if I had any applications that Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor knew would be a problem with Windows 7, it would go ahead and list them out here. And this is a great warning. And then we'd probably want to go to the manufacturer's website of that application and see if there's some sort of upgrade available to make it work with Windows 7. And the final item here is interested in Windows XP mode. Windows XP mode is actually something really cool that is in Windows 7 but was not in Windows Vista. And we're going to take a look at this more in depth later on. But real quickly, this is, this is pretty cool. A reason we might not want to upgrade to Windows 7 is because a lot of our applications won't run in Windows 7 just yet. So what they've done is they've actually created a Windows XP compatibility mode that can allow us to run those applications on Windows 7. And again, we're going to see this more in depth, but if we want to see if that's possible on our computer, we just click this link here, see if your PC supports Windows XP mode. Go ahead and click it. And you can see I've got a couple of warnings here, and I've got enough RAM to do it, but my virtualization technology is not supported, and also I don't have an extra 15 gigs of free space. So again, we'll, we'll talk about that more later. Let's take a look at the 64-bit report. It's going to look very, very similar. You can see I can scroll down. You can see I've got the exact same warnings and our program section. So this is going to be the same. Uh, one thing to note, though, is uh, it's important to look at this to determine if you're, if you're running a 32-bit version of, let's say, Windows XP or Windows Vista, if you can actually upgrade to 64-bit Windows 7. So it'll let you know here it says custom installation required. So this means I do have the ability to upgrade to a 64-bit operating system. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next movie.